That'd be good, thank you. Good. Right, before we start, do you need a drink or anything? No, I've got me coffee. I'm all good for me coffee. <laughs> got my water. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, so do you want to just start by uh, introducing yourself a little bit? Yeah, okay. Well, my name's Mark. Um, I'm half of uh, Hats Off, Gentleman is Adequate, along with Malcolm Galloway. So my role mainly is as bass player, um, but then for recording purposes, I play guitar and keyboard and we're co-producer as well and co-mixer and occasional co-songwriter as well. So it's a sort of collaborative effort backwards and forwards between myself and Malcolm. Perfect, and where are you based? Uh, I'm based in North London, in uh, Enfield, North London. Uh, Malcolm's based over in Belsize Park, so not a million miles away from each other. But obviously at the moment, it's pretty hard to see each other. So uh, oh, yeah. everything's, everything's phone call based and kind of uh, lots of Dropbox files going backwards and forwards with each other, that sort of thing. For well, yeah. at least technology allows that now, eh? You know, to be honest, that's the way we write anyway. So we don't really get face-to-face -face too much until it comes down to the production stage and we're sort of going through, you know, bass drum sounds or whatever. Um, the way it usually works is Malcolm will send me a rough idea of a song and then I'll add all my bits to it, whether it's stick or guitar or... Hold on, you're breaking up a little bit there. So that's the way it normally works. So, you know, lockdown for us in terms of a working method is the same as it's always been. Oh, perfect then. Yeah. And then how, how did it all begin for you two then? Well, we're old school friends. We've known each other since uh, secondary school, basically. So first school bands sort of territory doing sort of Queen and Iron Maiden covers. And then... Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, so we've known each other since we're sort of 11, 12 years old, you know. Um, played guitar and bass at school. Um, did a few sort of school gigs, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then Malcolm went and became, you know, a medical professional, doing doctoring sort of stuff. And I kind of went into um, guitar retail, you know, working in Denmark Street and doing all that sort of malarkey. So we didn't get together. I mean, yeah, we always saw each other as friends you know, all, all the time, especially. But the music got sidelined a bit. And then Hats Off started. It was a solo project of Malcolm's. And he started doing open mic nights after not really doing much playing for years and years and putting it on the back burner. Um, and I went along to a couple of them in Islington and kind of, you know, thought, oh, would you want to come down and play a bit of bass maybe, you know, join in some Bob Dylan covers or whatever. And from then it sort of started escalating. I mean, the first album is basically him by himself. And so by the third album, I'd maybe added a couple of bits of bass tracks and then it sort of escalated from there. We started co-writing and now we're just doing it, the two of us. But um, there was a stage where Hats Off was five people, maybe. I think it was five or six people. We had a drummer, another guitar player as well or two guitar players at one point, and also um, Malcolm's wife, Catherine, plays flute. And so she oh, stayed with us, and so she... Yeah, that's it, yeah, so yeah. So um, she plays flute on all our releases as well, and she's doing the odd bit of vocals now and again now as well. So when we go out gigging, um, it's sometimes the two of us, occasionally Catherine, if we can convince her. <laughs> so the bigger the bigger gigs we've done when I mean, we did sort of Shepherd's Bush last year uh, played O2 Shepherd's Bush uh, which wow. was fantastic for us yeah really really cool um, we opened up HRH Prog uh, Festival um, just the three of us went on the stage at Shepherd's Bush and it was like it just it was it was a blast it was really cool <laughs> so we were meant to be back there this year um, but obviously things changed so the next big gig we've got is going to be next year in April because uh, HRH Proc has been rescheduled for Leeds O2 Academy next year. So that's not bad. You know, I've never played Leeds. I'm looking forward to that. It's good that they started rebooking stuff now. I was getting a bit yeah. worried. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, April, is, it, is, that, is that even too kind of soon? I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I mean, there's, there's actually another band that I play as well. I'm, I'm actually in another band called It, 
uh, and we've got a gig potentially booked for December 6th, which is literally sun next Sunday. So oh, yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens on Thursday as to what the restrictions are and how it works in terms of the tier system again. Um, mm. But it's going to be a socially distanced one day prog festival up in Stourport near Birmingham. So no, um, hopefully I'm it's going ahead. Originally, so I'm okay, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, 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 um, <laughs> Yeah, Stourport Civic Centre, which uh, again I've played there before with Malcolm as a, as a promoter called Steve Gould. He's really cool and he's sort of really supportive. Um, just that sort of scene as well, the prog scene. It's kind of a lot of bands know each other and everyone really gets on. So um, he's got all the things in place for it to go ahead if it's allowed to go ahead. So, uh, yeah. you know. Fingers crossed for you. Yeah, hope so. There is a <laughs> I do have to ask though, the name. Yes, it comes um, up a lot. <laughs> yeah. It comes up it's a lot. It's a good yeah, yeah. attention, mind. <laughs> well, it does. I mean, that's the, that's the good thing about it. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't exactly trip off the tongue, but if you're going to do a search for our band name, we're the only band with that name that comes up pretty much. So, you know, it's easy to find. Um, it's an idea of Malcolm's. It's a quote that was attributed to either Strauss or some other kind of composer about another composer saying how fantastic he was and oh hats off gentlemen he's fantastic and everyone throwing their sort of top hats in the air these all these yeah. victorian gents throwing their top hats in the air so being sort of very um self you know deprecated and kind of english about it we thought let's make it adequate <laughs> so there's this idea of um everyone sort of celebrating something something that's very very normal and kind of uh, you know not fantastic. It. It's great. It is great. It caught yeah. my attention straight away. Well, also the name doesn't really suggest anything either. It doesn't. It doesn't lead you down a certain road of, oh, they're going to sound like that, or they're going to sound like this. Which is handy. Which, uh, lead, leads me on to the next question. Like yeah. I know it's hard to classify your music. Yeah. I think it's a bit of everything, to be honest. But well, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Well, what were you aiming for, should I say? Well, between the two of us, we've got such a massive selection of influences. I mean, Malcolm's also very classically influenced as well. And he also writes a lot of uh, minimalist classical music on the side. That's his other project he does. So he's very influenced by like Steve Reich and kind of Glass and people like that and very repetitive sort of minimalist sort of music. But then we've got the classic prog stuff, like we've got the Floyd bits and we've got um, Marillion is a, a really big touchstone for both of us. Um, but then, you know, I'm into kind of a massive sort of factory head and sort of, you know, Joy Division and New Order and kind of all those sort of bands, um, early 80s post-punk stuff, uh, massive Kate Bush fan, uh, you know, all of Peter Gable's solo albums, that sort of thing. So, you know, Bowie, but yeah. loads of stuff, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, whatever, it, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all good. So when we write a song, we don't ever think, oh, let's write a song like these people or that. It's either going to be a fast one or a slow one or an up one or a down one. And then we'll sort of go from there, really. Brilliant. You mentioned briefly before that you were in another band. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about that one? Yeah, that band's called It. Um, they've been going for a while as well. Um, the guitar player I know from Denmark Street, basically from working in Denmark Street. He used to work in one of the other shops. And uh, their bass player left. And this is whilst I was doing Hats Off. And he said, oh, you know, do you fancy being in two bands at once? I was like, well, yeah, because I've often been in two or three bands at once ever since I've been playing. Because that's, the, that's a lot of a bass player, I think, you know. It's not like guitar players who are ten a penny. I think if you're half decent on bass, you can kind of fit into different scenarios. And that's a proper full, you know, four piece live band with a drummer. So it gets me back into playing in a room loud with a drummer. Um, and my first gig with them was last year to go and play um, Prog Dreams 8 Festival over in Holland. Wow. That was my first gig. So it's literally overnight ferry from Harwich and then we went and played Holland and it got, um, it got videoed on like 16 HD cameras and multi-sound recording. And so we're just sticking that out now as well on a, a Progressive Gears, the label. 
and it's um, yeah, it's a live DVD album package as well. So that sort of band is much more Porcupine Tree, Stephen Wilson-ish, more rocky. Again, still with a sort of Meridian edge to it, but also quite political as well. So it's a different things are hats off. So I get to fulfil different things in both bands, really. And um, out of both of them bands, which song is your favourite? Which do you enjoy performing which, the most? Which song? Wow. Yeah. The song. Out of both bands. That's, yeah. that's a hard one. Um, until recently, before I was doing it, there's a song we've got called Laditia in Hats Off, which is about, um, it's about a World War II atrocity. Um, and it's quite intense. Every time we play it, it's, it's a very emotional song. Um, I remember actually, we are on the way to a gig in Wales, and Malcolm played me the demo on the train, and I started crying, which wasn't the reaction I thought I was going to have. Because <laughs> he had all the lyrics and everything worked out. And so every time we play it live, we sort of look at each other and we know it's going to get quite emotionally intense. And so that's always been a favour to play live. And it goes down well as well, even though it's quite dark subject matter, it goes down well with the audience. Because, um, you know, we are, I mean, the live setup with Hats Off is myself and Malcolm playing our instruments live and singing live. But we're playing to our own backing tracks because we haven't got a drummer. So what we do is we take out the album, but without us on it, effectively. So, you know, people go, oh, we haven't got a drummer, and oh, we're just playing to backing jacks. We're like, well, hang on, it's us. Yeah. You know, we recorded all that music anyway, and then you still see us two bouncing about like loons, you know, and sweating <laughs> about on stage and leaving it all on the stage, because, you know, we do put on a performance. Um, in terms of live songs now because i'm playing with with tom who's a drummer in it and i've actually got a clip you know a reaction with a drummer again for the yeah. first time and you get that kind of thing you look at each other going well come on then you do a little bit and i'll do a little bit and that sort of thing um we've got a nine minute song called path of least resistance which is a tricky one to remember because it's nine minutes long with a lot of different changes in there but um and it goes through different sections of being quite heavy and then being quiet and that sort of stuff that's always really good fun to play but um, yeah, I'm, I'm still sort of, you know, heads down, rock out sort of thing, which I sort of got from my thrash metal days, I think, when I was first <laughs> learned to play bass, you know, listening to Big Three and kind of, uh, you know, Steve Harris and doing that sort of thing, you know. Get lost in the music, don't you? I do, actually. Um, people say this when they come and see a show with, 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 you know, myself and Malcolm, we're quite unassuming, mild-mannered <laughs> you know, characters off stage. And then you see us play and it's kind of, uh, and this intensity comes from somewhere and we just kind of, um, yeah, we, we do we do like to play live, definitely. That's the one thing I think both of us have missed this year is just the interaction with people live. Um, you know, and I think every musician will say that, quite frankly, this year. I think I was going to say that. You know, we've had, obviously, we've been doing lockdown videos and things like that especially during the first lockdown, we had, we had the, the gorgeous weather, actually. We we're quite lucky to have that weather. And so, you know, we did some of our songs, you know, I, I'd go and sit in the garden and video my bits on my camera and then send them to Malcolm so he could amalgamate it. And so we could have like these lockdown videos like a lot of bands had, you know. But it wasn't the same as just actually seeing a person and playing it to a person one-to-one, -one, you know. And whether that's a big venue or I'm playing to three people, I don't care. I'll, I'll give the same performance every time anyway, so. I, I think it's important though, isn't it, for that audience interaction. I, I've seen a lot of bands perform live, like doing the live streams and stuff during lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Things like that, but it's, it's not, not the same. Like, I don't get the same energy. They don't have the same energy, you know? Yeah. I saw the interesting um, interview the other day with Simon Neal from Biffy, Biffy Clyro. Yeah. who I think are wicked, wicked band. And again, they're one of those bands that you see them live and there's, it's another level of, you know, what they do. Um, and they did a videoed streamed gig at Barrowlands in Glasgow. And it was, he said, it was weird just not having the crowd there. I didn't need to face the front. So I, was, yeah. I wasn't playing to anyone. So we could actually have cameras going around us and we could think about the performance in a different way. 
And so he's saying he thinks the way it's going to go now is to maybe incorporate those gigs and keep those gigs still going on, even when we can go back to seeing live gigs. You know, maybe have an end of a tour thing where you have a filmed gig with yeah. a special kind of scenario or a special set or something. And it's good for people who obviously can't get there and people from overseas and those sort of things. So I don't think these streamed gigs are now going to go away when everything goes back to a kind of normality. You know, it's just going to be another way of presenting your music. Yeah. That's it. Um, so you've had a few live performances yourself. Yeah. Fans. So is there any that actually stand out for you that have had a major impact on you? Um, the first one that we did with Hats Off, which was, again, I keep mentioning HRH Prog, but they really were a big step up for us because we went and played a festival in Wales last minute because a band was going to play there and their drummer broke his arm. And because we haven't got a drummer and we're all pretty much self-contained, it's like us and the laptop and a couple of suitcases. They're like, look, can you come down tomorrow? And we're like, yep, we can come. You know, we're rehearsed anyway, we can come. And so we went down there and it was this huge venue, you know, and um, walk in, there's two stages. We're thinking, oh great, it's gonna be on stage two, you know, the smaller stage. Because I think I'd, I'd seen um, Rival Sons play the night before on the, on the big stage. I said to Malcolm, oh, would it be great if we could play that stage over there? You know, he goes, yeah, whatever, yeah. So the next day, we go across to stage two. We bounce up our gear. The guy's like, what are you doing? Because, well, we're playing. He goes, no, no, you're playing over there. <laughs> 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 Back in the big room. And so we had no time to feel nervous or anything like that. It was literally like 10 minutes till showtime. Quick, go, plug in, play, go. And the reaction was just brilliant. And, and when you get to play through a big PA, through a big hired bass amp, and the, you know, the floors vibrate, you know, everything just sounds great. It's one of those things you don't even think about it, you're just doing it, you know. Um, so in terms of, I think, of a, especially if our confidence levels going out with just the two of us and a laptop, I think for our confidence levels and for the audience reaction to it, it was like, oh, we can, this is viable, we can do this. You know, people aren't expecting to see a third member doing that behind a drum kit you know? <laughs> and so ever since then it's been fine yeah so that was the one that, one that really stood out you know brilliant so we mentioned a bit before like your songs all tell a story I yes think. yes um, so what comes first does the story come first or the music i think the story generally comes first again this is this is more from malcolm because malcolm um the ones with lyrics, this sounds quite obvious, but the ones with lyrics, the story would generally come first. The instrumental ones um, can work either way. But the ones with lyrics, he'll always have a kind of idea of something to write about. So it's either something personal. So you know, one of the tunes on, on Nostalgia is a, a song called Ark, which is the, mo the more classical piece on there. It's almost like a kind of mini symphony thing. And it's about his grandfather's experience in World War II on the Ark Royal, the aircraft carrier. And because he, um, he was given his old log books, basically, from his, from, yeah, from his father. So he's got his old log books, uh, you know, from 1942, when they're just waiting there for something to happen and kind of all these sea battles going on. So um, we thought we'd make a sort of story from that. But what we generally do per album, or what we've done for the last three albums, is have a kind of overall concept for an album and then have songs that fit in there. So it's not a narrative concept as such. So the last album, Nostalgia for Infinity, is about it's the fragility of human civilization. So whether that's war or disease or I kind of... <laughs> yeah, do you, uh, do you know what? We've had a few interviews. This came out in February this year. And we planned to do an album launch and we were literally going to drop in and do an album launch. Um, we were chatting to the guys down at the um, uh, British Space Agency, basically, because I managed to get some, if you look, if, if you got the hard copy of the album, some of the photos inside are basically taken from this, um, it's, it's the British Interplanetary Society. So it's like Albert and NASA. 
and they've got yeah. lots of um yeah so they've got lots of sort of photos of 50 spaceships and kind of what things are going to be like in the future you know wow. but they have a headquarters in uh, waterloo and we were going to do an album launch there i i, I emailed the guy down there and he was well up for doing it and we could use their photos with permission, all this sort of thing. So, you know, <laughs> and so we could do that. And of course it didn't happen. It didn't happen basically. But um, yeah, that the overall concept is about human you know, fragility. And there's a song there called uh, Sixth Extinction, which is about obviously, you know, the planet gonna die at some point. Um, and then COVID came along and everyone's going, ah, oh, you must have foreseen this coming. We're like, no, not at all. <laughs> No idea, no idea. But it's just it's just another thing that fits in with the theme of the album. It's like kind of, you know, we sort of soldier on regardless, thinking we're invincible, and we're not at all. I think it it's good though that you can adapt the stories for that. You know, obviously it's it's good for COVID to to explain it and stuff, but you could do that. Yeah. With any, I think that's a really important thing to have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of the songs are quite on the nose. So, like, you know, Sixth Extinction is about the extinction of the planet. But a lot of them are left open to interpretation. So if people want to read things into it, then that's fair enough. I mean, yeah, the, the middle section, um, and the reason why it's called Nostalgia for Infinity, the middle section of the album is a sort of series of interlinked songs, which is inspired by um, sci-fi authors' books. Who we really, you know... And it's the Reynolds, who writes um, a series of um, sci-fi books, you know, set in space. And, and the spacecraft is called Nostalgia for Infinity, so that's where it came from. And so we asked him from, him from you know, permission to use it, and he really liked it and liked the idea of it. And so, um, you know, we went with that, basically. So, you know, the, the album before that was called Out of Mind, and it was about memory loss and how we forget things as humans and kind of push things under the carpet. So, again, it was memory related songs yeah. but not about one complete strength so i love it i love the story i do yeah so you're obviously um you are obviously very musical you play bass and keyboard do you yeah. have any yeah. uh, other hidden talents oh well musically also what's a, the other thing that i did learn to play is um is the chapman stick which i'm not quite sure if you know what that is no never heard of it I'll show you <laughs> Stay there, I'll show you actually. Hang on, I've, I've got it in my, in my computer. It's like. Uh, I see that. Whoa. What it is, is a ten string, it's a 10 string tapping instrument. Oh, right. Yeah, so it's, it's half bass and half melody, but tuned that way outwards. So if you've ever seen any old um, sort of 1980s Peter Gabriel stuff, and you've got this guy called Tony Levin on bass or King Crimson sort of stuff, he's a very, very famous stick player. And so it sounds a bit like a bass, but yeah. you also play it like drums, it's very percussive. So, you know, so that sort of stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I came from a cello background. I played cello at school. So, and the idea, I just fancied, I just fancied something different in terms of to add to playing straightforward bass guitar. Yeah. Well, it's certainly different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in terms oh. of guitar playing, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the best guitar player in the world. So my guitar bits on the Hats Off stuff is generally weird noises and backward reverby shoegazy atmospheric sort of stuff and that sort of thing you know i'll add in a kind of rather than blue scale i'll just play up sort of like that with loads yeah. of feedback um which would become a, you know, a pad or something underneath a, a song so um that's my skills you know perfect well that was uh, surprising i will say <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting me, this, this, will, this will mess with your head, this thing. It really will. <laughs> I can just about get on with a guitar, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on a coordination. Yeah, well, I see, I'm, I'm surrounded by musical instruments. As I say, my, my main day job is selling musical instruments. I've always been around guitars and guitar shops and 
pedals and amps and stuff. So it's a busman's holiday for me, you know, and I love it. I absolutely, I absolutely love doing it, you know. Amazing. So uh, if you could perform with any band or musician, is there any, anyone in particular that you would perform? Alive with? or dead or? Yeah, alive or dead. Crikey. Um, perform with them. That's the interesting one. Perform okay. with them. Arr. Actually, I've got to say Kate Bush. I've got to say that. Um, I was lucky enough to go to one of those gigs she did. I got tickets for one of the Hammersmith gigs before the Dawn gigs, and it was um, it was astounding. It was just it was like it was beyond the gig. It was like theatre or something. It was it was a you know a very very special thing, and you could tell that band they were there for like you know was it twenty eight days. You can tell tell that band were just like absolutely loving every moment of that gig because you know every time she opens the mouth, it's like oh she's doing that again. You know, <laughs> you know you could tell they, were, they were loving it. Um, yeah, just inspirational people like that. You know. Perfect. Bye then. So, um, I asked this to all the musicians. We've briefly touched on the COVID situation. Yeah. But obviously, a lot of people are struggling with their like mental health and stuff during the lockdown, especially people yeah. that are on their own and stuff. So, I am asking everyone for any advice they may have to try and help them through it. Oh, crikey. Try and help them through it. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I have, I've suffered myself with this, so, you know, I'm, I, don't hide it, talk to people, I think, talk to your friends, phone someone up, um, you know, and just, just, just phone someone up and say, look, I'm not feeling great today, or kind of, you know, reach out to people, and I think at the moment, people are very, very receptive to it now, because everyone knows someone who's going through that um it's more of a, I, I, it's more advice to give to people about other people actually rather than you know I'd just phone your mate up and see if he's okay you know and say how was your day today or just keep in touch um that, that that's been one of, the, one of the nice things to come out of this i think is people are interacting with each other again because they realize how important it is to actually you know not not be so distant from each other and actually kind of talk to each other on a one-to-one -one basis um, and not just use social media and stuff, so. Is the old saying, you don't know what you've got till it's gone? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm very happy. I've got, you know, a, a loving family and a you know, wife and two kids and all that sort of thing around me. Um, but I've had bad days during it, especially during the first one. I had a couple of bad days where I just, you know, didn't get out of bed, quite frankly. I couldn't be bothered, you know. So um, no one's immune, you know, but I think, um, yeah, just, just, just reach out, you know, make sure, make sure someone knows you're there. I think, I think that's good advice, isn't it? Because I think it's important to know that it can affect everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And people think, oh, you know, I'm fine and all that, but bam. Yeah. Especially well, blokes, yeah. especially yeah. blokes, especially, but thankfully, I mean, this, Obviously, COVID has brought this into, you know, sharp relief, as it were, but this was being talked about more in a positive way, even before, you know, um, COVID hit. So I think, especially in the last, what, year, maybe, a couple of years, but especially in the last year, I think everyone's now much more aware. And it's, and it's okay to talk about it now as well, I think, because, you know, it used to be a bit of a kind of like, oh, I'm feeling really down, but I can't tell anyone, because what are they going to think about me? It's just, you know, people of our generation and kind of, you know, generations below us now, it's kind of, it's not an issue anymore. It's not a thing you have to, you know, scrub under the carpet. It's just, you know. It's more in the open. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Back to you. You've yes. been playing music for a while. Yeah. So, if you could go back in time, mm. is there any advice you would give to yourself? Yeah, practice more than you do <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm okay. I'm good. You know, I, I get by, but there's still holes in my playing or my technique where I should have put more hours in maybe. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm sort of doing that now as well. In the spare time we've had, I've been sort of 
sort of you know start, starting to read music again and that sort of thing um which because both my boys are now you know one's playing clarinet and one's playing keyboard so i'm having to sort of go through the books with them so i'm actually starting to read you know clef again and that sort of stuff which i haven't done since i played cello at school um so, actually i was gonna say say yes to a lot of stuff that comes along musically but I, I was i was always pretty good at that anyway saying yes to opportunities you know don't turn anything down because you don't know what it's going to lead to you know or who you're going to meet because of it so yeah i think yeah practice yeah practice practice i think that's good advice for anyone isn't it <laughs> yeah well, also um get together with other musicians and and play live you know that's that's how you became better i think it's actually getting out there and doing it and don't be afraid to fail don't be afraid if you mess up a few notes or if you did what i did and fell off the stage a couple of times you know when you were young oh yeah i fell off the stage at the world standing more from stuff it really hurt um you know it's just the one it's just a little snapshot of, of, of one gig you know what i mean don't be, don't be afraid to sort of mess up it's, it's absolutely fine no one cares it's just a piece of time <laughs> And then, um, so what are the plans for the future then? Well, uh, in terms of Hats Off, we were in the middle of doing album number six, I think, um, which is kind of written. It's all done. We have a title. We are finishing off lyrics. And this is the point where we want to get in the room together. Because we, yeah, we've, we've hit a brick wall where we can only go so far without actually physically seeing each other face to face. Um, so that will be coming out probably next year. But in the meantime, because we couldn't stop writing stuff, um, we've got a three track EP coming out, which um, should be finished next couple of days, actually. I mean, we're literally just talk, sorting out mastering levels now and that sort of thing. Um, and there's, there's no tracks on the album, basically. It's, it's all three new songs that Malcolm's written that we basically want to get out there. Because um, we've always got kind of a, a locker full of songs that might not make it on the next album, but they might make it three albums down the line or something, or be a B-side or something. You know, there's, always, there's always things to be getting on with musically. Um, you know, the drop boxes is full of stuff. Absolutely full of stuff. Um, in terms of it then we're going to be promoting the, um, the Prog Dreams album um, with hopefully some gigs on that and then some summer gigs. And then I think um, Nick and Andy from it, we want to start getting into doing a new album with them as well. So it looks like I'll be pretty busy, I think. Busy, yeah. Yeah, Amazing. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, before we go, is there any messages you want to share? Um, thank you to anyone who still uh, listens and downloads <laughs> our stuff and comments and people like yourself, um, broadcasters, bloggers, interviewers, you know, who sort of help small bands out like us and get us heard. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, there was no way that a band like us would ever get heard because these channels weren't available, were they? You know, you couldn't just speak to someone on a zoom call have an interview and then get it in a magazine or a fanzine or whatever i mean you know there's obviously fanzines you know what i mean um i found out today um just literally through my letterbox today um prog magazine came to the letterbox and uh, we've made it to a couple of the critics 2020 you know best of lists which is okay. nice yeah for hats off yeah yeah okay. which considering the album was released at the start of the year you know, and might have got forgotten about in the great scheme of things, but um, that's really nice, you know, that we get sort of um, in mentions like, you know, places like that as well. So, yeah, thank you to anyone who's still supporting us in buying things. And, you know, I think music being really important this year, isn't it? For, for, you know, for everyone, it's one of those things that you can escape into and sort of get you through sort of the hard times. That's partly why I do this, to be honest. People love music and I think it's important to get the story behind the music. Yeah. Out there as yeah. Well. yeah. Just yeah. so you can understand it that little bit more. Yeah. That makes well, sense. It's, it's great for us. <laughs> yeah, we said, you know, having people like you helps us get our story across and kind of, you know, 
you, you get a bit closer to the the artist, yeah. <laughs> shall I say, <laughs> in, 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 with very big inverted commas. You, know? you are. Alright then, so what I'll do is um, when I upload this, I'll put all the links to where people can find you, buy your music and stuff like that. If you could just yep. send me the information when the EP is coming out and we can put yes. that on our website as well. Will do. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>